Hey guys, another quick update on the Perfect Wave 170 second scale Bandai Falcon. Um, what have I done? So I've moved over to this section. I did the pizza slice, as I call them at the back, um, and moved across, but I think that's all been covered in the last video. So since then, I've done this pizza slice. Um, all these streaks have been done with the airbrush and then some slight um, sort of definition defining marks just you know with um, the Tamiya weathering pack mixed in with some um, Vallejo airbrush thinner so it literally is just to darken down and dampen the, uh, the brush and literally just move it down a few times obviously the original five foot falcon everything was done with the airbrush. But being this tiny scale, it's near on impossible to get that, well, at least for me, to get the, the airbrush tricks right. So I've had to mask nearly all of them, airbrush them, and then define one or two of them, as I say, with the brush. <coughs> so um, color-wise, um, concrete, SP letter in gray, concrete, you can see there's a slight tone difference, especially when you start misting. I mean, there's mists of even reefer grey dark I've used. There's mists of SP lettering grey. Um, not only reefer white was misted over it, but again, at this tiny scale, re misting with reefer white is just going to make it look frosty and like you're looking at it through tracing paper. I I did that on my first Falcon. It sort of ended up okay, but I'm preferring this this sort of look. Although it is starting to look more like the 32 inch, which is darker. Um, but that's just the, you know, that's just how it's ended up really. It's just, I just don't want to mist with reefer white anymore really. So, <clears throat> what else? Dark, um, reefer grey, dark there. There's also this um, chipping underneath. I think that might have been a grey tone or just normal chip. I can't remember to be honest. Then there's a little red um, bit of paint there. And then, you know, just the usual suspects. Now, I should zoom in on this bit if I can. This doodad looks to me like the Formula One, uh, probably a Ferrari F1 part with the, what looked like King Tiger tracks, because they're the long ones. That's, um, that's mad, that area. <laughs> it's really fun to do. Because that hatch there, which I think is a is an eight rad hatch, that's that's darkened down slightly. There's like um some sort of wash again used with the airbrush with rust, but then all the other rust that you can see, they're actually um quite defined. So they're they're like rust markings rather than a rust wash, and then that's on top of a concrete panel. Um, and then if I zoom out again. You've got, let's move it. You've got your box car again, um, reefer grey light, and then this panel was reefer grey light. And I've just moved over onto the front section, which is crazy cool. There's loads of stuff going on with that streaks, and then the the, the blast marks, which are going to be awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, reefer grey dark, reefer grey dark, concrete, concrete, reefer grey light. Um, it's crazy that that's the same colour but light and dark. Um, and that's basically how we're sitting so far. So I just need to finish off this. There's going to be a, another panel of boxcar um, just there, I think, or somewhere around there. I'm looking at the ref backwards. Again, regarding the ref, I'm using the New Chronicles book that has the wonderful Falcon pictures in. And regarding sort of uh, panel placement, once or twice I've picked up the actual Bandai instructions because they're not far off on colour tones and where they're, where they're being put. Um, and then of course I've got ref on the computer and that was sent to me by John Stewart. So thank you, John, JT. Um, that's helped me no end. Okay, guys, how you doing? Um, moved on now to this section. Um, done the red panel and this 
grey panel and also the darker grey panel inside. That literally is just um, more layers of the same colour. So this is a lighter pass with reefer grey light and then you just go heavier with the reefer grey light in that square. Again, you know, not gospel, but just this is how I've done it. And that's um, <clears throat> made that square more prominent. Then I've gone around and done the dashes and I'm just mixing up some SP... Uh, what is this? SP Dark Lark, 1975 Dark Lark for the streaking and the, like, um, these little squares that are on it. So when you're mixing it, People ask me like, what what ratio do I do it at? When I'm doing streaking, it's it's, it's really thin down. So, that's thirty percent paint, the rest thinner. So, I don't really do it as like I don't look up at the side of the jar. I I do it by the feel of how it falls off the cocktail stick, and it should be like the consistency of like really thin milk or tinted water. Even if you really want to go to town with the mists really lightly, you know, you just figure out your own you know ratio. So, um, oh yeah, and the other thing, I got this um, photo etch part that came along with a commission job I did a while back. Um, this was from Falcon 3D Parts, and it was on, well, it came with um, some 3D printed Y-wings that I did for a commission job or someone. But they've been very handy with circles because I can use them for masks and dots and dashes and things. There's lots of bigger dashes over the falcon and i'm now literally going to make my own um rectangle shape by just masking off these like that and it's probably going to be that 2.3 mil dash there that i can press against the panel and get an airbrushed dash so the dashes on the falcon do appear to be airbrushed the, the bigger ones but the um the smaller dashes appear to be more precise and sort of um hard-edged so i imagine they are from the letra set um sort of decal well it wasn't a uh, letra set were like this peelable like vinyl sort of stickers i think if i'm right in thinking i never i've never had much to do with them but they're that's how the um uh Falcon was done. So, if I can sort of show you, it's difficult to see in this book. All over the, all over the Falcon, you've got um, like these dashes. One there, one there, <coughs> two there, one there, one there, and what they are, the thinner ones are the the letter set ones, I believe, like these little ones, and then the bigger ones like these are airbrushed on. So they probably would have made their own stitch. So similar to what we're doing here okay so time for some streaking and rectangle sort of dash marking things i'm shooting this at about 15 psi with the badger velocity airbrush which i didn't want to leave on camera for too long because it's in absolute disgusting condition <laughs> So let's just try one of these dashes. I'll do it, I'll do it on some um, masking tape so you can sort of see what I mean. So yeah, I'll be just holding it over that. I think I might have it too thin, but that gives you an idea of the dash mark. It's been created. So I'll just start doing these dashes now. So there's a couple under the dish. So there's one right here. That's too thin. Right, that's come out okay. And there's one over there, just to the left of that, or the right of that little. Yep, 
that's come out okay. So I'll be doing that all around. I won't bore you with, with that. But it's just sort of showing you how I'm, I'm doing those rectangles. Now, there's some streaking going on all over this section and most of it is hard edged streaking, which is reassuring to see. So I'll just go over these, some of these tanned panels and show you how I'm doing them. I know I showed you in the last video, but that was more freehand. This is going to be a slight angle. You're making like a very long streak. Lasting off the top of the panel. Spending most of the time just getting the pressure right around the uh, masking because you want it to get right. And then concentrate on the top more than the bottom. God, my airbrush is spitting like mad, but that should uh, have a nice streak now. straight down down like that and then there's one to the left of it which is quite faint so I won't put much um, paint on that guy go another fainter streak so I'll do that all over this panel and do another video afterwards showing what it looks like okay so we're gonna go on to the blast marks now there's lots of interesting little shots left and right and there's also some knocking back with the Dremel I think because there's some white underneath the scorch marks so again with the thin down paint and really up close See the model, I'm just going to go around and start blotting in, darkening down the uh, whole area. Okay, and then I can see there's, I've done the three above it, but there's, I've done them hard edge when they should have been soft, so I'm just going to go over the top of them. Soften those out. Oops. Um, and make a mist over them again afterwards. They look a bit drastic at the moment. But there's one streak going down the middle here. one on the front going down okay then there's some like ones that shoot out and then there's one Sorry if you can't see this. Just using the masking tape as, a, as an edge.
it's looking all right. There's some, there's some darkening down all around here, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll refine it a little bit. But there you go, you get the idea. That's what we're working with. Okay, I'm getting close to finishing these streaks somewhat. Uh, there is a few more to do. I just noticed one as I'm talking. There's one across there, like that. There's that one. There's one across right there. Okay. Now, all over the um, falcon. Oh, sorry, hang on. I'm holding the airbrush in my mouth. All over the falcon. Um, bear in mind again, this was huge. I mean, literally. I mean, this is like the turret is like 11 inches or something. It's like that big. It's it's huge. They would have bound, they would have just misted all different colours around, but at this scale you can't really do that. So with this sort of um, um, thin downed um, paint, I can just literally bounce it across the panels with the mist. Just bounce it, turning your airbrush around, bouncing it around, just random places, and that gives like a, a, a bit of definition and shade into the panels. Don't go mad and just flood it. Just, just bounce it around and that'll, to the, you won't really notice it first. Well, the idea is not to notice it because it's gonna like blend it in. And there you go. And that's just giving it a, 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 a look, you know. Okay, so now the blast marks are in place. I can take a file and literally just very carefully scrape back certain areas where they have done on the original. You be really careful, less is more here. It does look like it's standing out more on the camera than in person, but um, some of these raised details have had sandpaper over them. So that's, that literally is it. Any more than that would look out of place. Okay, so um, uh, dish I suppose next.